this is an experience video for the rhythm piano thing I did. So, um, back in November 2023, my guitar friend suggested that we do a cover of the song Kansas City by the New Basement Tapes. And um, he kind of found it amusing that the song said, going back to Kansas City, and I was going to be moving back to Kansas City. So, I was like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> that could be fun. Um, I thought it would be a good, um, like, return to music, because during the move I wouldn't be doing any music. And then also, um, it would give me the opportunity to try something new that I've been wanting to try for a while. So, what I was wanting to try is, you've heard of um, rhythm guitar, but... I wanted to, I don't know how to play guitar, I do piano, so I wanted to replace the rhythm guitar with piano, like rhythm piano. Um, so there is a song called Somewhere Where Only We Know by Keen, if that's how you say the name right, and if you, I'm going to link it in the description, so if you... Uh, look at 35 seconds in you'll see the piano player playing but you'll hear it before that and I'm gonna call that rhythm piano it doesn't have guitar in it the piano is just taking care of all of it and I kind of want to do that I want to try it out see if I can do it I guess because if I can it'd be cool to do for one of my own songs I'm like you, you kind of need that <laughs> if you're just piano so I got started working on this, you know, after the move and got all settled in and stuff. So around February this year, 2024. And first thing I did was raise the song three half steps. I felt like that was a, it, it was a little low for singing for me. And I felt like um, three higher was, it still preserved some of the original feel of the song. As opposed to like two steps felt too low, or two half steps felt a little low, four felt a little high, but three felt good. So it went from key of C to key of E flat. And then I looked up guitar tabs for, you know, because there's no piano, so I have to see what the guitar is doing. And it had piano chords in there, and it allows you to transpose them so you can see what the chords are for guitar and piano. It tells you the notes and all of them. So it looks like this. This was, um, I don't know how close I gotta get, but this is the uh, guitar, uh, guitar chord charts, and then these are the piano chords. And um, if you know anything about piano, you'll know that I, I kind of show it here, like you have this section up to B, and then you have C all the way to B, and then C, and it just repeats. This whole like chunk here just repeats all the way across the piano. So when you only have a small snippet of the piano, I have no clue where I'm supposed to play these chords at on the piano. So what I tried to do at first is listen to the song and just play the chord here. And does that sound like it's right? No, maybe it's a little high. Let's put it down. Does that sound right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I was kind of failing. So I went to my guitar friend for help. Let's see. And he told me where the start of all the chords were. And uh, he also told me that middle C on the piano, that one is C4. The piano goes all the way down to C1. Each, uh, each repeat of that like section that I said just keeps repeating. It starts down here and just repeats up to two, three, four. So, um, so then I learned the, oh, he also enlightened me that guitar chords, you play more notes in the chord than you would just a standard like triad three note chord on a piano. So like a C chord would just be C, E, G, but on the guitar it's like six notes or something like that, not three. And I'm just like, hmm, maybe I should figure out what the guitar is doing because the piano might sound better, like it might sound more full if I'm playing more notes. So I was like, all right, I'm going to have to learn how to read guitar chord charts again. And so 
I first ugh, relearned the strings. Oh, this is so awkward. Um, <laughs> so, what are they? So, the highest one, lowest one. I don't know if these are, I did not tune this thing, so I cannot tell you if um, that's, if those are the right notes, just pretend. <laughs> so from highest to low, it's, it's uh, E, A, D, G, B, E. And the first thing I noticed is that there's a C chord, which is going to have a C in it. And there's no C string. So I'm like, how do you play a C if you don't have a C string? <laughs> guitar friend. <laughs> so he enlightened me once again about guitar. <laughs> and he said that, um, so the metal pieces that go across are frets. Said each fret is a half step up. So for example, this um, is the B string. So if I were to play the first fret on there, you can see it's higher. So higher, that's a half step up. So C is a half step up from B. So that's how you play a C. You just put your finger on the first fret of B or, you know, all of them will get there eventually. But okay, cool. So what's I going to hold on to this thing? So for relearning guitar chord charts um oh, you can't really see that very well can you so at the top of the chord charts there's a black line at the top of all of them that is the top of the fretboard here it's the start of the fretboard um on the charts there are hor there are vertical lines those are the strings there are horizontal lines. Those are the frets. And then um, you got the chord names on top. Then you have numbers on the bottom. That is supposedly what fingers, I guess they're suggesting that you play them with. So if there was a T there, I think it would be thumb. And then one through four is pointer through pinky respectively, so I think one, two, three, four. And then what else we got? Um, this 4FR and 3FR there tells you what fret you're starting on. So like these three over here say that you're starting up at the top, but the one that says three, you gotta count one, two, three, so you're starting here and counting down wherever it tells you. And then on the first three, you can see a dark black line near the top. It's called a bar, I think, B-A-R-R-E. And it's telling you to put your finger over all of those strings. So the first chord has you covering all the strings, like, you know, like this, or however you do that. <laughs> I'm not a guitar player. Um, so it's, I think your finger is kind of acting like a capo. This is a capo. And so if you wanted to cheat, <laughs> you could just put this thing on here and, uh, voila, it's covering all the, uh, top strings for you. <laughs> but it seems to me basically what it's doing. Um, oh yeah. So at the top, you'll see on some of them that there is a little X. There also could be a little O instead of an X, an O or a circle or whatever. So if it's a circle, it means to play the string open. So it would be just hitting the string, don't touch any frets. And if it's an X, then you mute the string, which just means you touch it. So it doesn't make a sound. Or you just don't play it at all. Mm, yeah, I think that's it for the Guitar chord charts. Alright, so once I relearned all of that, I wrote down all the notes from the 
charts. And so here they are. You can see I have the, the key up here, but here's all the notes. And the key is E flat. It has flats in it. But the guitar chords, when you like write down each individual note in each chord, you can see that it's a whole bunch of sharps. Um, I don't know why there's so many sharps in there. There's double sharps and, and everything. And I'm like, guitar friend, why do I have a bunch of sharps and a key that's flat, not sharp? So he told me that guitars don't do flats. They just do sharps. Okay, interesting. But, I mean, they're easy to convert, so no big deal. So, like, this E sharp at the end, um, I turned into an F. The A double sharp is a B. You can translate them all, so I did that. And then I consulted my music theory lesson and figured out what the heck all these chords even were. I mean, they're pretty simple. I just looked at the chord section of the music theory, like the the triads. So like the C minor is a C minor triad and then it just has an extra C and G on there. So instead of just C, E, G, now it has C, E, G with another C and another G. And then I put where they are on the keyboard at the bottom, whether they're at, you know, that one, two, three, four, whatever. So that's where they all are. And if you look, for example, I don't know, even the, uh, the first one, the last one, they all span multiple numbers. They actually span like three numbers. <laughs> so uh, going from like a C2, for example, to a C3, that's like spreading my hand, thumb to pinky, all the way out. I can't really go any farther and this wants me to go across three of those sections and I can reach across one <laughs> so I have to so I learned very quickly that I'm going to play all these chords with two hands not just one like a guitarist would be able to so I in order to learn these with two hands I decided to make my own sheet music um, so here's my sheet music. If you want to see it, it's lovely. It's really not that exciting. I just put all the chords on there as whole notes because I don't really care how often. I just care what the chords are, which hand is playing what. And I even put the little, uh, and the third, the end of the third verse, it has an arpeggiated chord at the end, so... I add that little squiggle line for the arpeggiated chord there. And yeah, wrote myself all sheet music out. And uh, I learned from that. And the first, the first day I played, it was really hard because I hadn't played piano in forever. So <laughs> I was having a really hard time playing any of the chords. And I ended up because I normally spend about an hour chunk of time each weeknight on music and I ended up taking the last 15 minutes going back to my first learning book and playing all my favorite super easy songs and it made me feel so much better like I actually know how to play piano <laughs> I was like yay I didn't have to do that again thankfully after the first day I was good to go I knew the chords would be challenging but I also knew that they were at my skill level, so I'd be fine. But the first day was really overwhelming. <laughs> so then the next thing I did, once I got all the chords memorized, I could play them just one time with all the words in the song, at the pace of the song, everything. I was good. I could even play the arpeggiated chords. Everything was fine. Then I had to learn the strumming part the how you make it rhythm I guess um, I guess first real quick arpeggiated chord so you're not gonna see this but this is a C 
triad C E G and I'm gonna there's one below it C3 so um, arpeggiated you have to play all the notes separate so it would go from the bottom note to the top note one at a time but you would play them faster than that and you'd want to make sure you know you're going in order from lowest note to top note don't let the right hand get ahead of the left hand so something I'm not very good at these but something to this effect <sighs> something like that so you have an idea of what I mean by arpeggiated chord it's like a fast broken chord anyway so I got this lovely guitar here that I don't know how to use <laughs> And uh, I found a guitar tutorial video that just doesn't do any words. It just tells you how to play the guitar portion. And all I did was put my hands on the strings and listen to the guy strum and try to, you know, memorize how he was strumming. And after I got the strumming down, I knew that it would be way too fast for a piano, so I tried to just kind of cut out some strums or slow it down or something to make it a little more piano friendly because a guitar you can go down and up you know you can play pretty fast like that piano you go down there's no up <laughs> so, can't can only can only go down so fast <laughs> so um, once I felt like it was kind of reasonable I transferred it over to piano and then um, it was still slightly fast and I had to cut out one more strum, one more down on the piano. And uh, then I finally got it and I could play it. And what do I got left here? Oh, blah, blah, blah. You guys don't care about that. Okay, so I had the, was playing the whole song with the strumming and making it rhythm piano and doing good and everything's sounding great and then my guitar friend breaks the news to me he's not interested anymore <laughs> I'm a, this cover is competing with his personal music priorities and then apparently I didn't realize that me trying to play the rhythm on piano as well was kind of a demotivator for him so oh well <laughs> good to know <laughs> well anyway so I decided to just not do the cover because what I wanted to get out of doing this outside of you know I, I really just wanted to try out the whole like rhythm piano idea and well I was there I just needed to record it so I figure what I would do is just have me play while I'm you know just record me playing and just put that over the song and then it'll just at least give an idea of what it sounds like if it had piano in there instead of the rhythm guitar. So hopefully you can kind of hear it. Like I know the piano is not supposed to be there, but hopefully, hopefully you can hear that it kind of worked. I felt like it kind of worked and it could work if it was a piano song and I was better and I could like add notes so it wasn't quite so monotone and you know, could sound better, like the Somewhere Only We Know song. <laughs> um, but I call it a success. I feel like it worked. So maybe I can try using this in my own stuff. Do I have anything else? I don't think so. We're good.